I don't need the money. I don't need the prestige. I don't need the job. I don't need any of this. I'm doing it because I think it's important. What's happening, my friends? I have a special guest today. He's a buddy, Brandon Herrera. You may know Brandon already because he's got millions of YouTube followers. He's a businessman. He's a Second Amendment activist, and he's also a constitutionalist, which that pumps me up. Uh, those of you who are already following Brandon know that he has announced a congressional run for the 23 district in Texas. And I wanted to talk today about it. So Brandon, thanks so much for joining us. Welcome to the channel. John, thank you for having me, man. It's been uh, it's been a long time. I think last time we, we talked to each other is when we were down at that uh, that big range day we did here in Texas. Fun times and then kind of not fun in some other ways. Yeah, this one was a little wet. Good times. We're in the rain. It is cold, but we're with friends, so that's pretty cool. Thanks so much for joining us. I wanted to talk about your congressional run. I noticed, like, right now you're already serving the public in amazing ways. Uh, people don't really think a lot about the Second Amendment advocacy thing that you're doing, whether it's just... Uh, just fun YouTube videos, having a lot, cutting up and shooting AKs and building and stuff that all helps grow people's appreciation for firearms and responsible firearm ownership. And it really helps undergird the second amendment. So though you're not kind of beating your fist in the air, uh, wearing a tie as a political candidate before you still are influencing culture and culture is influencing politics. So why are you making the shift from the wonderful activism that you've been doing now to running into the politics? I'm like, what, Brandon, why are you joining the enemy? Why are you becoming <laughs> those that we hate? You become the very thing you swore to destroy. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, it, it wasn't something that I ever intended to do. Uh, I, I don't really, I follow politics fairly closely because I, I think that that's just important to, to stay, you know, educated on, on the, the goings on of, of our world. But uh, I never had any desire to get into it myself. Uh, right. It does is the opposite of appealing to me. Uh, I don't like the political world. I think it's kind of grimy. And uh, to be honest, like I, I've, I've got a very nice setup doing what I'm doing. And I, I'm doing something I enjoy. And uh, I, I've, you know, didn't really see the, see the need to, to change that until I started looking into uh, my personal representation, my, my congressman, and, and what they were doing uh, here in Texas and in District 23. And, and unfortunately, uh, my representative, my elected representative, uh, is Tony Gonzalez, who I don't think represents my ideals, and I don't mm -hmm. think he represents Texas ideals. Uh, he's a uh, he's an establishment Republican that, that voted for Biden's post-Uvalde gun control uh, he voted for amnesty. He's voted against the family. He's he's voted for a lot of things just straight up against the party, which not that the Republican Party is the be all end all. You know, sometimes they're right. Sometimes they're wrong. I hate talking about it like, you know, he betrayed the party, but he, he more importantly betrayed the conservative ideas that got him elected in the first place. And most importantly, uh, he doesn't represent me. And I don't think he represents the majority of the people who actually live in this district. So um, in the absence of a candidate that I thought actually could pull him out of his seat, uh, I figured I'd at least give him a run for his money and make sure that he knows that that seat is able to be taken from him at any time. Were you approached by somebody that are saying, hey man, we think you should run, or did this come from yourself, your own uh, principles? So I guarantee you I was not the, uh, my, my run was not the idea of any anybody in the party itself. Uh, I, I I think they probably have a long laundry list of people that they'd rather <laughs> be taking this uh, this job than me. Uh, that are a lot more uh, say politically correct and politically safe uh, yeah. than somebody like me. But uh, I, I I had a, a little bit of a background. Like I, I speak at you know Young Americans for Liberty, and I I do a, a good bit of you know activism in that way, and I do have a bit of a history in politics. So I, I did have the connections. That I started floating it around. Um, I, I I looked into it. I was talking with with Donut with with Cody, mm -hmm. and we really were wondering, especially after this last election when uh, when Senator Fetterman uh, was was elected. The man is just half conscious. Like he's, yeah. I, I'm not even 100 percent sure he's sentient. And if that man who can't string a sentence together can get elected as a senator. Uh, then, then I wondered, you know, what maybe our chances were. And the more I looked into it and, and realized, you know, hey, we've we got a really good shot at, 
and taken out somebody who's voting against the interests of you know Texas and really it's just a it's a gun control vote he he doubled down and said he'd vote for it again and uh, i i decided that you know what maybe it's best he doesn't have that chance and so i talked to some of my old political contacts and uh, we started doing some polling some preliminary polling and and whatnot just to kind of feel out the district and see if this was actually an attainable thing and i think we all decided that that yeah we actually have a, a decent shot at, at least pushing him into a runoff which is really just going to scare him quite a lot so that's that's goal number one. Um, if if I'm the guy who who takes a seat, great. I don't really I don't really want it to be. But if uh, if that is the service that's required uh, to get his vote out, then I'm happy to do it. Give me a read on the folks of Texas. Are they pissed with the establishment? I, this is I'm I'm guessing that this is true because I feel this where I'm at. Of like, no, I don't want any politicians. I want the suits gone. Give me outsiders who aren't compromised, who are doing this because they want to represent the people. They want the freedom stuff. They're not after prestige or the money or the connections. Yep. Uh, it, is that what you're banking on? Because at your own admission, you don't look very political. You know, you're, you're not, not wearing all. a tie today and you're still of like, uh, yeah, you're you're cursing on your channel and you're being uh, gritty and crass and you're just, you know, doing your gun guy thing and having fun. Doing an interview on the news with an RPG behind me, that sort of thing. It's not exactly polished politician. Yeah. Your, uh, campaign like website I was just visiting and it's you with a 240 and a, a belt of <laughs> 762 dangling. And I'm like, I need know nothing else about you <laughs> to vote for you. <laughs> yes. You have my vote. Good job. Yeah, so, if uh, uh, yeah, if you're voting against Tony for the gun control reason, it seems like I'm a pretty decent alternative. Um, I, I I don't really know. It's uh, it, it's I think well whether you like like him or hate him, I think that's why Trump resonated so well in 2016 is because he was the political outsider. Uh, he had already made his money. He didn't. He wasn't doing it for money. He probably he lost a good bit. I'm sure. Uh, and an opportunity and you know and the the you know ability to talk to his peers at, in the left uh, who now are, uh, can't be seen dead with him or now that now they're canceling each other for even talking or shaking hands with them now it's it's insanity but uh back to the back to the farm i i think that's why he resonated so well and i think he resonated very well in this district uh based on our polling uh, people still have i think it's like a 70 something percent very favorable opinion of Trump in, in District 23. And I, because I, I, I think people do want the political outsider. They don't want an establishment guy. And the party doesn't even want an establishment guy. Uh, right. the, the Texas Republican Party voted to censure Tony Gonzalez a few months ago. So he doesn't even have the support of his own party. A uh, couple rumors, and we'll, we'll get back to some more questions I have. A couple rumors I heard. One is your security guys, you're requiring to carry AKs. Is that true? Can you <laughs> speak to that? And if I wanted to get on a security detail and I'm really just not an AK guy, can I do the AR thing? I mean, I can neither confirm nor deny uh, the AK rumor. Such a I politician. Just, I know. I was Ooh, just going to say, we're already getting into politician. the political talk. Oh man, uh, I don't. I don't have any security. My security is my my CCW currently, and and the CCW of all the friends I, I happen to have around me. Uh, which you are, you're more than welcome to join in, uh, as I consider you a friend with, with a gun. So uh, the, the, the weapon of which you choose is, is on you. Second rumor, I want you to dispel this, if you can, with all your sly political speak. Uh, many memes have circulated. It's hard to parcel out fact from fiction. You even did a video on uh, all the memes that were happening. I'm wondering if you can win an election just on savage memes alone. This one had the ring of truth to it. I don't think this was fiction. AOC is trying to date you. Is that is that true? And if, if she is trying to date you, does this put you at odds with uh, billionaire, trillionaire Elon Musk? How do you feel about getting a powerful <laughs> enemy like that? in the likes of this uh, love triangle. Yeah, uh, I, I don't, I cannot speak to the accuracy of whether or not she is trying to date me or whether or not she will in the future as we will likely be co-workers. Uh, but I do not think it is a good idea for me to be at odds with Elon Musk, especially since he's now right down the road here in Texas. Uh, that, is, that is a very, very bad, powerful neighbor to dislike you. 
And I'll never get my cyber truck. Rumors aside, I want to jump into some uh, other things of how do you think you're going to be attacked? Uh, of like, you're really strong on constitutionality. And I think that's the most mm -hmm. important stuff of, hey, just rem return us to the old paths of sanity, the stuff that made America what it is, of the Constitution, Second Amendment. Are you at all worried about all the other issues of like, oh, of like, oh I got to vote on energy and... I don't know jack about energy or transportation and that's a lot of learning is that intimidating yes. for you and uh what do you look at i know you have a little bit of background in law you studied law some before your business blew up so i think you're a leg up on me there but is it daunting absolutely yeah that's uh it it, it is a lot of learning it's it's a lot of uh you know we're, we're jumping in the treadmill at 10 miles an hour already so it's it's uh it's a lot of catching up quick, but I think that's why it's important to have good advisors and people that, that I respect uh, that can speak to the accuracy and, and to, the, uh, um, to the policies on, on more specific things that are you know, very outside of my wheelhouse. Uh, but the, the good news is we, I, I have a pretty easy framework for, for how to vote on things. And it, it sounds like a cop out, but it really, I do believe it's just that easy. It's just following the constitution. You know, uh, whether or not the government has the authority in the first place to even be making these laws or policies and things is something that I don't think enough uh, congressmen actually consider. Because every, every year it seems there's more laws that are passed that I'm, I'm flipping through the Constitution, like where in the hell did they get the authority to do this because they don't have it, and yet the laws pass. Yeah. And it, uh, it kind of drives me crazy. So that's, that's something that I, I have a feeling that the majority of the votes are going to be very straightforward on. Uh, I saw in a video you recently pushed that you were planning on just doing two years and then moving on, if I heard that right. Yes. I was wondering if, I, if you would at least be open to considering uh, a, a second one, four years. And this is why I asked, because you said it kind of like, I plan on doing two years. And I'm like, man, I wish you wouldn't shut the door to a second. Uh, hmm. You don't know where you're going to be in a year and a half or two years. And right. it may be that it really took you a full year just to figure out the lay of the land. You had to fire these staff members and you had to get these others. And now you're up and running. And right as we've spent a bunch of PR and money getting you in an office and you mm. know your way around and you built connections and you're making some headway, you're out of office. I'm kind of like, what the crap, right. man? I'm like, man, I think it's very likely to do a lot of real good in politics. And I'm not in politics, so I don't know. But I just imagine mm. if, man a second term would be really important. And, and I think from what you're saying, you hate politicians that just get in and they're the swamp, they're institutions, they've been in there for 50 years and they're mm. multimillionaires, which should be mathematically impossible, but there they right. are all super corrupt. And you don't want that. You don't need politics. It's not your end game. It's, it's a mm -hmm. stop along the way. But would you be willing to do a second term or at least reevaluate for a second term uh, in the future. Reevaluating re definitely. Um, it's it's not an absolute no. What I would prefer. This is my preferred way of things going down. And and, and you know if 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 I if I do end up winning and then uh, I, I do reevaluate and decide to do a second. I, I want people to know, like from the bottom of my heart, genuinely, one term is the plan. That that is that is what I would that is what I would like to do. Uh, if I can, on the condition that I can find somebody willing to replace me whose values I think are consistent with mine. Yeah, there's uh, like eight somebody... people, eight people who will stand <laughs> by their values in that office. Right. Somebody That's that, about I, it. somebody that I, again, like I think is, you know, already, because the, where, where I'm coming from is, uh, I, 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 I liken it to having already completed my main storyline if this is a video game, right? Like I've, I've already gotten to what I consider to be success. Uh, I've made my money. I've done what I've sought out to do. And now I'm just doing side quests. And, and this is one of them. Now I can't, I'm afforded the opportunity to be able to serve in this way because I don't need the money. I don't need the prestige. I don't need the job. I don't need any of this. I'm doing it because I think it's important. And uh, if I can find somebody else that I think also fits that frame, I think they're much less likely to sell out to the establishment. And yeah. uh, if, if I can find somebody to do that, I would love to have them take it over and I, I would happily endorse them and bow out. Mm. Um, if I cannot find that person, then I, I am I'm willing to do the job 
as long as I need to, but, but somewhat unwillingly. Yeah, and well, that's why it's public service, you know, and it, mm. it should be a chore, a service of like Washington, he took the office, he served three terms, and then when he stepped aside and John Adams took his place right after being sweared in at his inauguration, Washington leans over and says, I'm fairly out and you are fairly in. Let's see which of us is the happier. And Washington took it as public service. He was representing the people and he didn't want to do it. He wanted to live his private life hunting and on his farm and hanging out with his gal. And I could totally see that of like, as you said, you've already done your thing and maybe it's a, a short stint and you and AOC, you know, settle down in the country, <laughs> pop out some, I can fix her. <laughs> you can't fix her. You cannot fix them. No, you she's got crazy eyes. It. You can't no. fix the crazy eyes. No way. Uh -uh. Every single year they go a little bit different. You know, they just, uh, so what's going to happen to your channel? I mean, you can't keep, you know, I mean, this right here is going to be a two full-time jobs and mm. I can't imagine your channel disappearing, but surely it's got to pivot a little bit, right? To more of what you're doing. And it's, it's more about Brandon Herrera on the Hill, you know, doing, doing your thing, right? We're going to, we're going to use the B channel a lot for that. A lot for like the, the okay. campaigning and, and, you know, eventually, uh, you know, fingers crossed, uh, the, the job itself. Uh, but the, the main channel, I don't think is going to change that much. Actually. I think we just have to be a little bit smarter about how we do it. My workload already with the, the channel itself, um, is already, if, if I'm smart about it, very low, uh, range videos probably take a combined total of three to four hours to actually film, uh, mm. you know, the desk videos, depending on what it is, uh, after scripting, or if I do that, or if it's just an off the cuff thing, maybe like two hours. So being able to put out content like that, having a team, you know, having a videographer, an editor, every, everything like that, that helps quite a lot. Sure. So uh, I just, I would have to be smarter about it, like filming multiple range videos in one day if I have a day off, you know, something. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, a lot of people in office are able to do side businesses or, or right. really keep their businesses um, while they're in office. And I, I, I would just see this as an extension of that because it, it's kind of odd, but, you know, this is my business, so... Right. Um, I'll just have to be a little bit more uh, lean with my time, I think. But I'm, I'm going to try to keep it up. I'm going to try to make sure nothing changes that dramatically. So you mentioned you follow politics pretty closely. We just recently had the presidential debates, the very first one. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, Trump went on Tucker. Were you watching any of the presidential debates? And uh, how would you think those went? So I actually went to uh, young, young Republicans had a, a watch party uh, at a bar here in, in San Antonio. So I, I did watch the debates there uh, to the best of my ability to hear it in a, in a crowded bar. Uh, but it was, uh, I think it went really well. Uh, I think, honestly, Trump made a brilliant media decision to, to go on with Tucker instead of, of going in those debates. It just would have been a dog pile. Yeah. Um, and he, he really is polling so much higher, like it or not, like that man is, he's going to dominate this primary. Right. Uh, and I think Vivek is, is actually doing this really smart as well by being the new charismatic front runner who is not attacking Trump. And that's one, one of the things that I thought DeSantis really screwed up right off the bat is you're going to attack one of the most popular Republicans we've ever had. One of the, one of the most energized bases. Yeah. Uh, of, a, of a Republican candidate who's very popular, more popular than you are, and you're going to attack him right out of the gate. Right. Mm. I think initially, well, I guess this was before he even announced his bid, but everybody knew he was going to. Uh, Trump was going after Ron DeSanctimonious and, and whatnot, and I think he started hitting back real early. So I really don't. I, that, that name has all, always bothered me, too. I don't so think it's Ron very catchy. I don't think that one stuck. That one hadn't stuck. He's trying to force it through, but I heard somebody say it the other day. Uh, it was some meme. They're saying all Trump has to do is call uh, DeSantis, uh, "No Riz Ron," one time, and it's over. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, hey, who do you think won the presidential debate? Uh, I, I really do think Vivek uh, yeah. knocked it out of the park. Uh, he was clearly the one everybody else was afraid of. Uh, everybody was attacking him, and he was firing back pretty effectively. And uh, he got a lot of airtime, and 
I, he's he's been doing the media circuits really smart. He's been leading up to this in a very very smart and efficient way, and mm-hmm. gaining a lot of ground in the polls. And uh, I think after after last night, we're going to see him. I had money on it. I had money he was going to jump up to to about twenty percent. And who do you think tanked? I'll give you it. Tie for the the worst two because I want you to name two people who who bombed. Oh, I would probably say Chris Christie. Yeah. Did not do very well. He did not come off as uh, as charismatic at all. And uh, DeSantis answered a lot of things well. Yeah. I, I think he, he, he held himself together pretty decent. But he was the clear front runner a month ago. And he was ignored in the first debate. Which wow. is so much worse than bombing. <laughs> nobody, nobody talked to him at all. Interesting read. It's not great for the future of a campaign. Well, hey, Brandon, I know you've got stuff to do. Uh, where can folks find you and support you? More specifically, support you. For sure. It's, uh, so the, the, the campaign website is BrandonHerreraForCongress.com. Uh, that's where you, know, you can read a little bit more about the issues. We're, we're planning on populating that page out a little bit more. Uh, it's also where you can donate if you're, you're in the United States. Uh, we can't have any of that Russian collusion. The FEC is not really a big fan of that. Yeah. But uh, and of course uh, you can follow follow me over on on YouTube. Uh, but also the the B channel is where we're going to be posting a lot of the campaign stuff, the speaking, the uh, really just vlogging what it is like to run for Congress. Because I don't think Great. that's something that really a lot of people have any insight on. Like it's it's not really nobody's ever shown the entire process. I don't think. Well, you would definitely have my vote if I lived in Texas. You could have my vote anyway if we'd switch parties. If we were Democrats, I could give you twenty mail in yeah, exactly votes already so we're I'll mail you as many as many ballots as you want absolutely man. guys thanks so much for tuning in that's brandon herrera running for congress in texas i love the grassroots movement of people moving into office people keep pressing me to do it i'm not going to do it unless the lord god ascend or descends and says john do it i would jump for the pulpit before i went to the ballot box i am already serving and i'm serving in other ways you don't see so Back up off of me, guys. Uh, uh, I'm not called to it, but I'm glad Brandon is, and you have my full support, brother. Thanks so much. I'm proud of you. Thank you so much for having me, man. It's always a pleasure getting to talk to you. Guys, thanks for tuning in. See you.